Hey, welcome to Graphic Policy Television GPTV. I'm Brett, and my hands is one of this week's new releases. This is a Weapon Plus World War Four number one. Um, it's an interesting comic. There's uh, there's really two stories in this. There's a main story, and then there's this backup story that has brute force. Um, apparently, Marvel's doing something with brute force again. There was a, a trade that came out probably a couple months ago that this kind of explains why that trade was released. Um, but overall, this is this is an interesting comic. Uh, so the main story is written by Benjamin per Percy, uh, George Ginty is the penciler, Wayne Fauscher, Mark Deering, the inkers, Rachel Rosenberg is the colorist. The second story is by Ryan Cady, David Beldion is the penciler, Jesus Abertov is the colorist, Joe Sabino is the letter for all of it. Um, all right, so the main story, it's a sensational new hero. Uh, Ted Salas, he developed uh, a serum for the military, and then he was killed in an accident before perfecting it. Uh, the United States government decided to use it for their Weapon 4 program. Um, so they kind of had this, like, rip-off man thing, um, just like Weapon H had the Hulk Wolverine. This just feels like a weird spin off of that. Um, going into this, I was more ex expecting Weapon H. Weapon, Weapon H was a great comic. Um, I know the concept sounds crazy of a, a genetically created Hulk-Wolverine hybrid, and I was expecting more of that. This just feels like a concept that doesn't quite pay off. Um, I mean, this cover is awesome. It has this, like, Simon Bisley, Lobo sort of thing going on. Like, very 90s for me in a good way. Like, I want to pick up. I want to read this comic. The interiors and the story is just so different. And the story falls so freaking short. It's predictable. Um, there's nothing shocking about it. It really kind of just feels like we needed to introduce this character. Let's do a one-shot. Like, I do not see the point of this at all other than just doing a one shot in which case you might as well have done an anthology and just thrown the character in that and things might have come off a little bit better but like this is just the story is not very good it's as i said very predictable um the some of the situations are just very stereotypical and just kind of like a we're still there sort of thing um just nothing feels new or interesting at all um it's, I don't, it's weird. And the, and the, what's weird is Benjamin Percy is such a good writer. Um, if you handed this to me and asked me to guess who was writing this, he would not be the one that I would think that this was. Um, it just, it just doesn't feel like his normal self. Like, freaking run from this comic. It's just, it's not good. Um, the Brute Force stuff is interesting. Um... Brute Force is like this weird mechanical animal hybrid team concept. Um, I never read the original stuff, and so I guess it's it's they're going to do something with it. I'm not quite sure where the hell any of this is going. Uh, but that story was is fairly more. It is more entertaining, and the entertaining of how that is and the art as well. Um, I think also kind of makes how much the the other story, the man slaughter story, um, feel that much weaker. It's just, it's really not good. Like, I, I hate crapping on stuff like this, but it's just not, not good. So, this is the art for the first story, the man slaughter weapon plus story. We can get some of, like, you can kind of see the art. Like, we got this torture scene going on in Russia, and it's like, Russia is the bad guys torturing him, like, the design on this man, I, I guess we're calling it manslaughter, like, it's just weird, it just, take this and then compare it to this, like, this looks awesome, this just looks like the dumb son of this, like, it's just not, it just feels like a bad interpretation, um, so yeah, so that's that art. And then we got the Brute Force story. The art's actually kind of cool in that one. There's something about it that I really like. And I'm just going to go with that page alone and just show off that page. There's something kind of cool about that. I dig it. Um, but yeah, this is just... This is a big pass for me. Like, I... It's bizarre. I don't know. It's freaking weird, man. Um, 
It's out in comic shops this week. You can go get it. We got a link beneath this video. Put in your zip code. It'll tell you if it shops near you. No shop, no problem. We got affiliate links. Um, I, I just, I hate saying like, don't waste your money, but like, this is not. There's an audience for it, and I just, I, I just think this was a bad introduction, and the characters got potential. It's just not. Something does not click with it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where it went wrong. I swear, I, it's just, it's just, it's weird. Whatever. Um, so yeah, so you can go get in comic shops this week. We got affiliate links. There are affiliate links. So, uh, you know, we do get a percentage of that, but really you should go support your comic shop. It's speaking of support, I want to thank Marvel. Get us up with the review copy and thank you for watching. Now, if you are into Marvel, if you're into comics in general, check us out every single day at, uh, at graphicpolicy.com or on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Tumblr. All that graphic policy keeps me nice and consistent. So until next time, keep reading those comics and keep it geeky. Hey, thanks for watching the previous video from Graphic Policy Television. Just by watching, you help support our site. Thank you so much. Now, if you're watching these videos, you probably care about geeky things like movies, television, comic books, toys, games, video games, you name it. You can go and subscribe right now to our YouTube channel to stay in touch and catch all the new videos, or check out our website at graphicpolicy.com. There's a nice link on this end of the video. But as always, thank you for watching. Keep on rocking and keep it geeky.